Are you struggling to conceive? You have options, and at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Pop Culture Field Manual, sitting right at the intersection of weapons, action, the military, and pop culture. That was a really good one. That was, was but really you forgot good. to say podcast. But it's okay. Oh, okay. Well, it's 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 an overall branding thing, right? It it's, it's the Pop good. Culture Field Manual writ large. It doesn't need introduction it doesn't need elaboration you no. guys know it's a podcast you know the world over is is now i'm just assuming that we're listening to this 10 years from now and we're mm-hmm. just a worldwide phenomenon yeah plus yeah. It, we're episode 20 if you don't know this is a podcast. Oh, whoa 20 was, episodes was, i knew there was a special energy behind my intro it was 20 episodes man no, wow. no, we've been pumping these things out i'm excited yeah. man this me too so, man this is so much fun it's the best part of my week it is it's a highlight the weeks that we do these. the weeks yes and Probably. Guess what we're going to be talking about? Today. You know what we're going to be talking about, but this is more. Do you listening. at home know, or in your car? Because you're always in your car. Always in your car, <laughs> driving somewhere to or from work. Yes, but we all know weapons are cool. I mean, it's in the intro, sitting right at the intersection of weapons, right? Right. But it's not always the built weapon that needs some appreciation. Sometimes the weapons that are made from jack shit yeah. need to be appreciated when, when life gives you lemons you make a machete out yeah. of the lemon you fashion yeah, you, it you, fashion. you carve it you make some sort of choking hazard from the lemon zest <laughs> that's and right you feed it to your enemies like the peanut like the peanut scene in uh the dare the bad daredevil ben affleck daredevil Ooh, scene yeah he's in the, the what plane. is it? target we... what's his name again oh, oh, bullseye, bullseye. Bull- the target. worst <laughs> target <laughs> That's the awesome. complete opposite of what he does. He's, well, a target bullseye. Well, I just keep seeing a. Car- I remember there was a target on his he forehead. Carves he carves a bullseye in his thing, and he's like, "I miss idiot." Yeah. That movie's that movie he made sucks. Me. He made me, yeah. Right. That movie's terrible, but it's fun to watch. That was actually one of the first superhero movies I've ever seen. Was Daredevil? Really? Yeah. I that remember. was that was back before like. I mean, I'm sure they took it seriously. Qu- scare quotes, but I mean, like that was before they had like a grand vision, you know? Because you know there yeah. was a whole. I don't know if this is exactly the time period, but like there was a time when Marvel was not doing good financially, and so they started selling off their IPs to yeah, to, to make money to know? other production, and that's why you got like you know horrible Fantastic Four, like the the Roger Corman Fantastic Four movie. I'm I love that movie. The How other, dare you? The other bad ones. I'm sorry. There was one that nobody's like hardly ever seen. Have you seen like the first Fantastic Four that's ever came out? Yeah, it was like a it was like a one million dollar budget. Roger Corman directed it. I think it was one of those things where they have to, in order to retain the rights, they have to um, ma- they have to make something with it. Otherwise, it reverts back to whoever, mm. like Marvel or whatever. So I don't know. It's a, go look for the Roger. Go. You probably it's probably free on YouTube. You it know? must be. Yeah, but is that the first one that came out? You have to elaborate because I'm. You, yeah, no. That I mean, it, it never came out. It was never. Oh, released. it never. Oh, it was never released. Yeah. Now I'm not okay. talking about the uh, the you one know, with the Chris uh, Scarlet. What is Chris that Evans Scarlet one? Uh, Chris, Chris Evans, Jessica who, Alba. Jessica, Jessica Alba. There you Alba. Go. That's the one I'm talking about. Because yeah. I used to be obsessed with Jessica Alba. I thought she was the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. And then I met my girlfriend. Okay. <laughs> and nice now, save. Now you know better. <laughs> yeah. Nice save, Cameron. But uh, but today, today, folks, we're talking about improvised. We're not talking about these random things. We're not we're talking, talking about, about Jessica Alba. We are talking about improvised weapons in pop culture that deserve some recognition. And right. I think we've bantered enough. So let's <laughs> dive deep into let's this. Let's continue to banter in a focused manner. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's get back on the path. But, dude, okay. I know you've been working really hard on this list, and so has Chris, <laughs> by There's scouring so good stuff. Google. Uh-huh. But please <laughs> hit me with something. Uh, well, the this this franchise, we're talking about the Bourne identity or the Bourne franchise, Jason mm. Bourne. Holy uh, shit, it's Matt Jason Damon. Bourne. Damon. Uh, <laughs> Matt Damon. Because um, I, I, it was one of those things that, I mean, obviously, when 
Matt Damon it blew Matt Damon's career up. Yeah. Like it really made him like an action star, like a mm-hmm. leading man kind of thing. But for some reason, I remember the action. This was like the fight styles is something we hadn't seen before. At least not like in American movies. Or, mm-hmm. He did like like Sea Lot and like uh, uh, Kali. I think that's probably the same thing. But like uh, like Filipino Malaysian martial arts styles mm-hmm. and stuff. And but anyway, a lot of that stuff has to do with taking picking up whatever you have in hand and using using a weapon. So like the Born Identity, right? The first one when they're in the apartment and the guy gets in there, busts through the window, and he takes a pen. And he and he uses it, you know, to jab. He jabs it into the guy's jab, hand. Jab. Ooh, dude. Yeah, and then the guy, guy, he takes it out of his hand and stuff. Ugh. Oh man, it's that's so, brutal, yeah. dude. And and he does that. I mean, he. I think that was kind of a, a hallmark of the movies where he would find things like in the second one, he rolls up a, a magazine and he like whacks the guy with it, and uh, you could barely see it. The cinematography in the second one was like really shaky cam, and it. Just handheld the entire Legitimately time. Legitimately made sprinted. me ill. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. That's like, that reminds me of when I first saw Cloverfield. Cause you know how the entire <laughs> movie is just some dude's camcorder. Yeah. And it, to make it worse, I watched it on a flight home <sighs> with a little bit of turbulence. So oh my gosh. <laughs> that movie has forever made me motion sick. <laughs> it's like so 40. I understand exactly what you're talking about. But no, he was a natural born MacGyver. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, just with, with in the weapon in the weapon style. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about MacGyver too. We got to talk about MacGyver. I actually yeah. want to talk about his handsome twin brother, MacGruber. <laughs> dude, those <laughs> movies. <laughs> dude, those that movie is one of honestly, it's one of my all time favorite co- comedies. Jump into it, man, dude. <laughs> that if you want to talk about innovative, just masterminds, MacGruber in that movie is. Uh, a genius i mean the celery and the butt cheeks <laughs> to act as a distraction works he's like i love that man can you imagine filming that like you that gotta, you get have a pair of cojones i'd yeah. be like you know <laughs> quiet on set yeah impossible because everybody's just dying laughing i couldn't <laughs> which was the point that was the point right mm-hmm. is what is that it was the distraction and it yeah. works i, I it does it's been a long time since i've seen the movie it does work he has his uh his partner, who's the captain, or he's like some officer, the guy who goes, think your shit don't stink? Yeah. Guess what? Shit does stink. Stinks like shit. That's... <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and then he headbutts him. He's just like, yeah, <laughs> punk. And then he finally, his whole team gets killed in the van. Giant recruiting montage. Chris yeah. Jericho's all in the it. WWE All the WWE. Bros, yeah. yeah, people are in it. His entire van gets blown up because they're like... They pack it full with all the explosives and stuff. And he's like, hold on, man. I got to go talk to the brass. And everybody's like, fuck the brass. Fuck the <laughs> brass. Fuck the brass. And he goes to talk and they all blow up because the shit goes off. I think someone smokes a cigarette. It's like the most impossible. Isn't, isn't he saying like, I made those explosives myself. Yeah, yeah there's something It's like, uh, homemade C4 that homemade he's bragging C4. about as it explodes. Yeah, he's like, I made, I packed that van homemade C4 I made myself. <laughs> he's like, guys. No, oh, no, no. no. And he's just like, I'll suck your dick. He's like, what? And he comes back and he's completely naked. He's like, you got any lube or something? You got any white out? <laughs> I don't even know what's going on, Ryan. I don't, you remember that movie a lot. You've seen that movie more times. Oh, yeah. Than I. No, it's a, it's a deployment classic. It's I think oh. I watched it on, I watched it three or four times. Every month we watched that movie. I had, or at least I did, made an effort to, because that movie's just so good. That's awesome. Yeah, man. just the voices that come from that guy. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, next, next. I, I, well, let's talk about MacGyver then, because MacGyver is the is the the template from which mm. MacGruber came. It's and, the, the whole idea is that, and I've never seen MacGyver. Really? Yeah, I've only seen MacGruber. No, see, so they've got a modern incarnation. I don't know if it's supposed to be his son or his grandson or whatever, but it's the same premise. Too. But uh, was it uh, Richard Dean Anderson? There you go, Richard Dean Anderson, uh, MacGyver, '80s show. And I forget the organization he works for, but it's like. Um, but anyway, the whole conceit of the show Project Phoenix. What's that? Project Phoenix. Project Phoenix, oh, right? And it's and he and it's his job to like I guess help people, but the whole the whole thing about his character is that he won't he doesn't like guns and he he doesn't like using like weapons and stuff like that. But he's a genius, so he would find out these really creative ways of getting out of these situations. And yeah. while like MacGruber, you know where it's and, and he like, literally used guns, and then he uses a gun. He's like, "Oh my god, this is awesome!" <laughs> oh, does he? Yeah. Oh, okay. He finally picks up a gun, and he's like, "Oh my god, this is great!" <laughs> he's got. I remember the double Uzis. That's yeah, what I yeah. Uh, but MacGyver, same kind of thing. But it was really cool the innovative ways that he would, you know, uh, 
have to get out of these mm-hmm. situations. And, and he would, there was always a narration in the, in the show. Mm-hmm. And so he would talk about like, you know, he was chemical things with chemical compositions, but like, uh, uh, and he actually does diffuse a rocket. It's a, a rocket bomb, like in this tent with a paperclip. Like that's yeah. literally something that happens in the show, you know? And, uh, and yeah. And just that, stuffing all these, all these tools behind his ear and like a pencil and his like pencil protector, or pocket oh, protector man. or something. This useless shit. It's so good. Damn, dude. Uh, I mean, like in one episode, MacGyver, he, he, he makes homemade tear gas mm-hmm. uh, with like a, a vinegar, cayenne pepper and stuff like that and uses it to stop a robbery. Um, but yeah, it, 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 there's there's no end to the, like he... I remember there was one, he was like, South America's like these killer ants everywhere. And he had to like, he made like an improvised like suit to like run into an area to like turn on a valve. something yeah, Just like out of duct tape. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And, that, and that was the thing. He would always make it out of these really just mundane parts and stuff like that's whatever awesome. he had on hand. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's pretty amazing because all this, I hear they used to do, they used to like do research. They had like a research group or like some like college students that would figure out ways to use you know, like get him out of these situations and mm-hmm. stuff like, like give him the scenario and be like, okay, well, what do you have? And so we got a paper clip and we got some duct tape. And like, okay, let's make a bomb, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, this, this is how you do it. It was like, good thing it was before the internet because. Yeah. Jeez. I mean, that's like, you ever, did you ever make an MRE bomb? No. <laughs> You've never made an MRE bomb? <laughs> oh, I never heard about yeah, that. You can make a bomb out of an MRE. Wow. Yeah. It's like you use the mre heater and then you i think what you it's it's com, it's a compression bomb basically okay so Cause, you, cause, yeah because yeah. the mre heater when you expose it to water it yeah expands, it starts it to up. or okay. just in a moist area and it starts to expand and produce moist it starts to produce steam and gases and whatnot have you so i'm pretty sure the premise is you take the heater out of the heater bag and you stuff it in the actual plastic container and then you seal it up and right. tape it and, but you have to put some water in there, so eventually that thing will expand, and it takes a lot of force to blow that thing. So it's like a very audible explosion. So uh, all you got kids at home, if you have an MRE, go ahead and hit the YouTube and check it out. I'm telling you, you're limited only by your imagination. Exactly, these days. dude. Things that soldiers figure out when they're bored is mm-hmm. it's beyond me. <laughs> it's beyond me, but kudos to you, MacGyver and MacGruber. Your like innovation will be commended. I'm saluted with my left hand. That's bad. Can't do that. <laughs> okay. Anyways, I wanted to talk about so Robert Rodriguez, very yeah. cool, very cool director. A lot of, a lot of like almost. Wh- what would you compare him to? I think he's almost. It kind of is like a really dark all the time, really eerie. Yeah, he is. It, he is. A, is an odd. You know, an off. You know, just off sensibility. With, yeah. Like with his action and stuff. Like he came out of like total indie roots. Yeah. Like I think I, I remember him saying like he used to like donate plasma and blood and like become a part of like, he used to do those like medical experiment things mm-hmm. to get like medical trials, like to get like money to pay mm-hmm. for his films. That's awesome. I think he made his first film for like $8,000. That's awesome. You know, good for him. Yeah. But uh, I mean, he's came up with some classics like from dusk till dawn, which is on my list. Cause first <laughs> of all, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. First of all, some hikes, in that movie Some and hike is movie. boy Ooh. that's how i knew i wasn't boy. gay growing up <laughs> boy, she geez, she's movie. great she's great in that movie but uh and vampires everyone loves a good vampire flick especially when it's just murder vampires right mm-hmm. and i i'm a big uh what is it i'm a big uh fx guy so like like practical effects almost practical but no cosmetic effects oh, okay. so just like the whole like I used to watch Face Off like religiously yeah, yeah, on yeah, sci fi yeah. so I really like like movie makeup and like right all on. those uh, vampire transformations yeah. were super cool but specifically the weapon I want to talk about is the steak jackhammer <laughs> in that one I mean doesn't really seem like an effective weapon but hell kudos in the hands to the- of George Clooney yeah in the hands of George Clooney right and that's not a ribeye steak that is a wooden <laughs> steak. Right. That does sound like a dish for me. Yeah, the steak Vegas. jackhammer. I got that at the Texas Roadhouse with it's the blooming onion. Thirty-five dollars. It's, it's 30... a special. <laughs> no, the st- wooden steak jackhammer, the ultimate vampire killing machine. And I actually don't say ultimate. That is a fallacy because I don't think it's that effective. And just because it's, if you ever held a real jackhammer, yeah, they're very unruly. They're very unruly and they're extremely heavy. Yeah, like they're so heavy because they need all that force to pound through concrete. Yeah. So, and I don't think you could just put a, a wooden stake at the end and just expect it to just plunge through somebody's, you know, heart with the amount of force. Yeah. 
I mean, you're better off making a chainsaw out of wooden stakes, <laughs> in my eyes. You almost oh, now I'm getting the image of the of the wooden stake chainsaw. It's very. I'm thinking of like large wooden stakes. Yeah, that's what I am. It's just you know? hurting your hands because it keeps banging your knuckles. Yeah, that's you almost I'm... need the cooperation of the of the killie to kind of line. Yeah, up you're like, hey, stand here stick. perfectly. Uh, don't move. This isn't gonna hurt. It's mm-hmm. just gonna kill you. Yep. I love and that one. Just I know that it's it's improvised, but they're both weapons. But she takes the stake and the shotgun, or I think it's uh, it's it's what's his name? Is it the dad who plays? Yeah, or is it? Uh, I thought it's the crucifix. Is well, yeah, it's a, a crucifix, but it's a stake and then a shotgun. Yeah, so he, he holds it, it up and then he boom, racks yeah, it. Yeah, he racks it with the stake and then he brings it up again. You yeah, know, I I just thought that. You know, I think I think Robert Rodriguez, uh, know, the now, dad was Harvey Keitel. Harvey Keitel. There you go. Thank you. But yeah, Harvey Keitel with the uh, the stake. That movie. Now that we're talking about it and we're talking about Robert Rodriguez and his sensibility, that's probably my favorite Robert Rodriguez. It's mine too. Yeah. It is. It's a classic. It, yeah. it never gets old to watch, I'll be honest. Yeah. Just it kind of starts hype. off as like one movie. It's, yeah. like a, it's like a road trip or like road trip escape and then, movie. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, wait a minute, all of a sudden there's like these crazy vampires. Yeah, it's not even like from the beginning where you know there's going to be vampires. It's just vampires appear out of freaking yeah. nowhere. It's a solid hour, hour and a half of like just this kind of weird crime movie. You yeah. Know? They're like just two criminals are, on the yeah. on the run. Yeah, Quentin. Oh yeah, the Quentin Tarantino's the brother is George Clooney's brother. That's why I was I was like, yeah, it's almost like really Quentin Tarantino ish that movie. <laughs> and I re- I just realized Quentin Tarantino is literally one of the main characters. He also it. wrote it. He wrote it. He he straight up wrote it. or They co wrote it. I think he and Robert Rodriguez. I think they both wrote it, but Quentin Tarantino definitely his fingerprints are all over. That it. makes so much sense. You know, side note, interesting side note. I hope. Uh, cause I'm taking time out of our podcast, but, uh, there's a, there's a documentary called full tilt boogie about the making of that movie. Uh, and it was a legit independent production, you know, and it was all about kind of the trials and tribulations mm-hmm. that they had of kind of going outside the system, financing it and making it and stuff. And, and, uh, it's really cool. If you're, if you're into that movie, I would totally recommend it. Full tilt boogie. Full tilt boogie. Yeah. Very cool. They didn't nice. pay us to, to promote that. No, no, either. no. We didn't get sponsored by Full Tilt get... Boogie, the documentary. This episode of the Pop Culture Field Mirror Podca- Podcast is brought to you by Full, Full Tilt, Tilt Boogie. Boogie. <laughs> All right, let's hear one. All right. Let, I, let hear one. Well, I mean, um, everything in Dead Rising. There's a video game series called Dead Rising mm-hmm. where it basically zombies, massive amounts of zombies to, to just mow through and kill. Mm-hmm. I mean, and and literally everything, almost everything is a weapon. Like you can get legit weapons like shotguns and machine guns, but like you create these weapons, you know, I think there's like, you know, it's like a, a hockey stick with a giant chainsaw on the Hell end yeah. of it, you know, and, and it, it just everything, basically everything you can combine and uh, into a weapon. Dude, you know? I was actually, I was trying to, for some reason, I saw this thing in my head, this weapon in my head that might be in that video game. Then it's like a, it's like a machete weed whacker. Is that That's in probably, that game? yes, absolutely probably. I don't even know what you're talking about, but I'm going to say yes. Yeah, it's like a weed whacker, just instead of the wires on the end, it's like knives. And for mm-hmm. some reason, I was trying to find what that's from, because like, it's like burned into my head. That's probably from what, where it's at. I mean, that's that's part partly what the game is known for, is just mm-hmm. the crazy combination of improvised weapons that, yeah. that the character comes up with. Yeah, I was like, God, I can't, I, and I never found it, so most likely in that game. Yeah, then. yeah, probably. God. Probably. Another one, uh, actually, speaking of video games, there's another one uh, I want to talk about a little bit, and that's, have you ever played the Dead Space yes. franchise? Okay, so. I played the OG Dead Space, because back in the day, you would go to GameStop, and all the games were $60, and you couldn't afford it, because mommy didn't give you your allowance. <laughs> so you got to go over to the used game lot, and mm-hmm. I remember I saw Dead Space, and I was like, oh, okay, I'll try this one out. And you'd never seen it or heard of it before? I've so heard of it. So what was that like when you first popped it in, and like. Because that game's awesome. The I, first one was so scary. I didn't realize that it... it I, well, I knew it was a horror video game, but I didn't know I was getting myself into. And I was just nice. like, okay. And it's like... It, it is scary at times. Yeah. It's super airy. You're like... Yeah. you're, And I like how your suit always upgrades and you start out with that plasma pistol or whatever. Well, it's actually... That's the whole thing is Isaac Clarke is not a soldier. He's an engineer. Yeah, he's an engineer. He's and just so like he, there. It's a, it's a cutting tool, basically. Mm-hmm. It's designed, you know, for repairing and all that kind of stuff. But you end up having to use it because you got to sever the limbs off the yeah. monsters, the necromorphs, you know. The necromorphs. Yeah, and you can get legit weapons later on in the series. You're able to customize things, yeah. and create weapons. And there actual... a giant chainsaw, like dueling. Yeah, disc you, you thing. Have, there's like a me- it's it's kind of like a Gears of War, where it's a, yeah. it's a melee weapon, but it's also like a shotgun. Or yeah, a yeah, yeah. Gun, you know, I but I just I just love. That. I remember. 
I, I love that, like, you know, like MacGyver and whatever, they're these guys that their main job is not to be a soldier. It's mm-hmm. whatever their job is, but they're forced into these situations and they have to improvise. You forced know, so. to kill. Forced to kill. Forced to dismember, mm. which is my favorite thing to do. Yeah, that's what I do on not my weekends. in real life because I would never do that to anything no. yeah. or anyone. Is that, what, is that why you have that trunk with the lock and it's always moist at the bottom? Yeah. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, man. <laughs> Well, moving on. No Country for Old Men. The cattle gun. Have you seen oh, No Country? Oh, you're right. It's, it's, yeah, he's the, air, the pressurized yeah, thing. It's that, like, uh, yeah, it's like... Yeah. Oh, what's his name? You know, his, the so name, the right? act... Javier Bardem. Javier yeah, Bardem, thank and you. And he, he plays... Ant, I don't know how to say his last name. Anton Chigurh. Chigurh. I, yeah. I thought it was Chigur, And I'm like, that can get us caught up real yeah. easily. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah. No you're Country right. for Old Men. I, I, where's the beef? Because it's the cattle gun, right? Yeah. And he pulls that guy over in the cop car. And, and, he, just, and it's so brutal, too, because he's like, could you just hold still for a second? Like, he, could you just... And the guy's like, what are you doing? And he just, just, he just kills him! Yeah. Oh, my God. And I never understood. He's like, is he a serial? Is he, so they... I, was, I, was, I actually haven't seen the movie. I've seen bits and pieces. Oh, dude, you gotta... It's, I know. it's brutal. Dude. I saw the scene where he's like, heads or tails. And yeah, like, you gotta yeah. call it. You gotta call it. And the guys just like, yeah. well, I don't. What There's a whole know? thing. Like, it's a Coen Brothers it. movie, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. a Coen and Brothers it's movie. like it's 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 all about fate. That somebody yeah. told me later. I'm like, I don't know what this movie's like. It just seems like random stuff happens. Yeah, because it's about goes around. fate, you know. Yeah, because he's because at the end he's at this he's at Josh Brolin's wife's place. He's sitting there. She's like, you don't have to do this. He's like, everybody always says that. Everybody always says you don't have to do this. He's like, I got here. He does the coin thing. And yeah. She's like, why? He's like, I got here the same way the coin did. You know, it's just it's just this life circumstantial kind of thing. You know, I so don't he, know. is he just like a force, like a spirit? Is he, yeah. Well, is it almost yeah. is he taking the like people's fate into his own hands, and he's just well, no, it's it, it's like he to- he's I don't know if I don't I forget what the main thing is. Like he's been Josh Brolin. There's some money that's missing in like a a drug deal gone wrong, mm-hmm. and he happens upon it, and then uh javier bardem's character is after him and there's like a cat and mouse kind of thing going on that's kind of the main thread of the movie but yeah, but yeah. it's heavy and it's deep yeah, it is because i mean like i said i haven't watched the movie my buddy just showed me bits and pieces of it because he like told me he's like you would love this movie yeah. and i'm like okay and he showed me I the cattle gun scene yeah. i mean so the cattle gun is just it's basically just a tank it's like an oxygen tank and it's attached to the end of this little trigger device that yeah. looks like a little rod it's in his a little hand. piston that pops yeah out. and it's when, for killing it's for killing cattle. Yeah, for killing cattle. It's like cattle. a humane way to kind of... Like, yeah, you know. it basically, it's it's super loaded with like the gas. So mm-hmm. this little prong comes out at super high speed and just impales their brain. Yeah. And he just goes around and he uses it on people. And yeah, like, he uses it a bunch step. of different... I remember there's a, there's a scene Josh Brolin's like waiting for him. He knows he's coming. He's got a shotgun ready. And he's sitting there. And then all of a sudden the, uh, the lock out of the door pops out and like hits Josh Brolin. And then he jumps out of the way and there's like a shotgun blast. But like... uh. You know, he uses it to like get through the yeah, locks. Yeah, get through the locks, yeah. and he's just like stand still. Yeah. And yeah. The guy, yeah, Jesus. The in the car, so. Yeah, the guy in the car, this poor guy, Dude. doesn't know it's coming. But now there's, there's, it, go watch that movie, please, because no I'm gonna be watching that. it. It's not family friendly. Not it's family very, friendly. Very brutal. Exactly. So watch it with your kids. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you're, if you want to. My kid, want- my parents always used it was always the sex stuff that I wasn't allowed to watch. But mm-hmm. my parents would let me watch Full Metal Jacket and all yeah. the heavy, like bloody, violent stuff. It was like, no, no boobs, though. No boobs. Yeah. Like, mom, I've seen nudity. I'm <laughs> I'm 20 years old. <laughs> Why am I still living at home? Yeah, Jesus, I gotta move out. <laughs> or join the army. Well, I also have another Robert Rodriguez one on here. Um. Oh, okay. From Planet Terror. Yeah. So this is another movie. The Grindhouse actually. movies. They got yes. Planet Terror, and then it was Death Proof was Quentin Tarantino's. Oh, okay. It's like a double feature. Yeah. So they work closely together. They're like brothers. I yeah, guess. Yeah, besties. Yeah, they're besties. Bessie besties. But actually, this is another movie I haven't seen. But really? Yeah. Oh, it's good. No, I haven't they're seen. They're both but good. It's I. But it's one of those movies that's like you. You know. I don't. It's like how they describe pornography in the '60s during the U.S. Supreme Court uh, case. Uh, you don't know, you don't know how to describe it, but you know it when you see it. Oh, okay. So yeah. <laughs> well, that was a real. That was a good stretch, man, for that reference. Was, you know, it was. Yeah, I actually quoted that from a movie I just saw, Ted Lasso. Oh. Hilarious. Okay. Have you seen Ted Lasso? No. Oh my God, it's on Apple TV. Okay. It's hilarious. It's about a uh, um, an American. Don't lose f- the thread. We're not losing the thread. I have to describe this. It's so good. It's a uh, he so, improvises. A, a yeah, I'm improvising ball. right now. 
it's a but he basically it's an American football coach who like NFL football and they hire him to play or to coach uh, Richmond in the Premier League in Britain. So he knows nothing about soccer, but now he's coaching this soccer league, and it's it. probably it's like a great mix between American comedy and British comedy. It's it's like my new jazz right wow. now. But anyways, nice. Planet back Terror. to Planet Terror. <laughs> yeah, so the. Cherry Darling is yeah. the main uh, character in this, and she loses her leg very early on, from what my research tells me. Because yeah, I have not no, seen yeah, it. she gets she gets attacked by zombies, and they have to amputate oh. her leg. Okay, you know? and they end up replacing her leg. Yeah, her her, a... her boyfriend. Yeah, they, is like this awesome warrior dude. I love it because in the movie, um, like it's a like there's a they do a thing where they do the film like the film broke, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and they they're like. And they cut to like two hours later, and everything's on fire and stuff. And and the one dude's like, "I'm sorry, I never, I sorry, I ever doubted you, sir." And he's like, really, he's like, if you would have told me that your background, if I, if only I'd known." He's like, "It's okay, it's all right." And he's like, he's supposed to be this awesome, like, super cool warrior guy, but you like never get to find patch? out. No, no, he's just like he's not that know. cool. Then huh? <laughs> not that cool. Yeah, he's cool enough, well, he's cool enough not to lose but one of his eyes. That's true. But uh, anyway, yeah. So he. uh there's all and yeah, and they do all this crazy stuff where like she like blasts herself off. She like flies through the air by by firing off a grenade from her oh like, two hundred three mounted. You know, and she's you can't like, even do on. that in real life. There's <laughs> Dude, an arming distance. You can in Planet Terror. You can in Planet Terror. Yeah, but they replace her leg. For those of you that haven't seen it, like myself, but know what it is. <laughs> it's a pretty iconic image. It is. Know? It's very iconic. She's got she her has leg a, raised yeah. up, you know. She's at. She replaces her leg with an M4 with a 203 attached to it. I, think, also, I actually think it's a legit a M16. With is it? Yeah, yeah. I thought it was an M4 because I was looking up. Pit, I was really diving deep into it because I was like, what kind of weapon is this? You're right. Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe the 203 sticks out further than the. the it barrel. does. Anyway. But there's also a bayonet just floating. Did you ever notice oh, that? Yeah, they have like right. another bayonet on it, and yeah. it's just like literally just chilling yeah. somewhere. It, there's not even a, it's not even attached. I love it. But I was like, damn. Now that's improv. Like, if I ever lose a leg, I'm yeah. not going to be going to the doctors and getting this expensive, you know, prosthetic leg. I'm going to yeah. go to the gun store and have them attach. You know, they they they. Ha- I've seen it I've, now. I'm now now I'm racking my brain. But there's actually a. Uh, either a television show or a movie where the dude has a wooden leg, but it, there's actually a shotgun like hidden inside, and he uses nice. it against. Just him, like so. the old hidden sword cane. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's an awesome tool. That's an yeah. imp- is that an improvised weapon or no? That's a hidden weapon. That's a hidden weapon. Yeah, I'd say yeah, meant to be. Oh, meant man, to is be. that a new episode? Best that, hidden weapons. That new episode coming soon. I believe it is. Oh, there we go. Ideas, <laughs> ideas sprout as episodes play. Hidden weapon, improvised weapon. Best hidden weapons. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But yeah, no, M4 with the 203. Are you struggling to conceive? You have options. And at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome little improvised leg weapon thing. It's actually kind of sexy, actually. It is very yeah. cool, you know? The woman, everyone appreciates... beautiful woman and a gun together. Yeah, it's extremely lethal. Because yeah. everyone knows women are killers. That's right. Just by themselves. <laughs> That's right. You they're lethal them, enough. Yeah, they're lethal <laughs> with their words. But anyways. And uh, other good stuff, other honorable mentions and stuff like that. Uh, James Bond, Skyfall. Not too much... Uh, you know, what Skyfall. I love about Skyfall... <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, well, what well, they 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 I know that they they make a a strong point of not having a lot of gadgets in that particular movie, mm-hmm. but at the end, you know, they go to Scotland and his grandfather's Scotland. there. I I'm, I would love to have heard the story. Like, I mean, why not just get Sean Connery to be his grandfather? You know, to be like, you know, I know he's supposed to be complete the lineage. Character. Yeah, but anyway, uh, so they get attacked, but they like. They uh, they had the shotgun shells in the floorboard, you mm-hmm. know, and the pressure switch, and it sh- shoots them up through the through the floor. And then they have the um, the chandelier, the lighting with all the the nails and like the you know all that kind of stuff. They switch the light on and it explodes. It explodes throws the nails everywhere. Well, the know? shotgun thing that's also in that newish film, Nobody. That, oh yeah, the yeah. action the action film. Yeah, yeah, they with, uh, uh, yeah. Better What's Call Saul. Yeah. yeah, Better Call Saul guy. Yeah. Is, is he Bob from Better Call Saul? Bob Odenkirk. Bob Odenkirk. Bob Odenkirk. That's yeah. a cool last name. 
I loved his. I like his journey. He went from like his total journey. comedy to total like drama action. Stuff. And drama now guy. action. Yeah, that's a good one, man. It is a really good one. I watched it a couple like two, three weeks ago, and it was a great film. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but he uses the shotgun shells. He attaches them to mouse traps, mm-hmm. and then Rick rigs a fuse to it so the mouse trap goes off, and he puts like nails on the uh, the primer. So when the, that mouse trap goes off, it smacks the nail, which activates the primer and shoots a shotgun shell. Yeah. And he uses them as booby traps. I think it's. I was like, damn, that's so cool man that's so cool i love it now that's an improvised weapon i'll yeah. definitely use that in my home <laughs> you need a really you need a really big home you have a really you big know. home uh I, well he all my one of my favorite moments in that movie is it's not an improvised weapon but he improvises with the weapon but he takes the uh the uh the claymore mine and puts it on the front of like the shield or something oh, like yeah. that and then jumps and at he the runs guy. yeah he yeah. runs because i mean claymore is their directional Sure. So, like, it does make sense. That's completely that, directional. It is very directional. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they don't blow... I mean, front towards the enemy, right? Sure. There's a little blowback, but that's why you can attach them to trees and mm-hmm. stuff, so it, it won't take the tree out. And, uh, I very mean, I've environmentally stood... Environmentally friendly. Yeah, I've stood pretty close to a Claymore to see, like, the uh, effects, because when we were over... I, yeah, it was when we were overseas. We had this... We were just fucking around with explosives. Like you do. Yeah, like we do on the daily. Oh, oh what do you yeah. want to do today? You want to go blow some stuff? I get some homemade C4. Yeah, homemade C4. <laughs> oh! Oh, no, 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 no. But yeah, no, I, I actually think that's kind of probable. If you have, like, a good backstop on it, I think I think that's real. I think you can do it. Dude. I would not try it, but I think it's possible. Yeah, don't try this at home don't or anywhere else, but we think you could probably do it. I don't think I don't know where you'd get a claymore at, but uh Right. <laughs> yeah, but hell. Maybe the airsoft one that just has a little spring inside and it shoots BBs out. Wait, there's an airsoft claymore. Claymore? <laughs> yeah. It's like at least when I was doing it back in the day, it was like uh it was kinda lame. It was literally just like uh you close it off and it was spring loaded, but it had a little like uh, trampoline thing like collapsed in. So when it opened, the springs would like kind of imagine if you took like a, a blanket and you it was you like, yeah, you pulled slack out of it and then you went boom and pulled it and it popped the like ball yeah. out of it. Yeah, and it, you just loaded it with BBs, and that's what I mean. It's kind of lame, but mm, nice. now I'm sure there's probably better ones today because <laughs> that was like seven, eight years ago, but. Technology is always getting. So I I, I should uh, honorably mention a, a few more uh, before we wrap it up. Uh, the improvised bow, obviously from Predator, uh, Jay Arnold Schwarzenegger, Benson. I love how he does everything in this in before the showdown with the Predator. He does it like a half an hour. Like he does all these things, makes prepping, the bow, just wrapping all his things. hands, exactly. wrapping some wood, makes the exploding arrow uh, arrow tips out of the bamboo. You know the leaves and prawns and stuff like that uh but i love it yeah uh you got the mech loader in aliens is technically an improvised weapon it's not it meant is, for combat it's not a combat it's nope. just a, a forklift essentially yeah and she does i mean and she does bolt she does like tie together the the uh the the uh no it's right, your favorite movie fake i know i know it's it's the uh the not the smart gun but the uh pulse rifle and the flamethrower but those are two weapons so anyway uh also, uh, uh, going back a little bit, Transporter, Transporter 1 with Jason Statham, mm-hmm. the, the, the amazingly successful Transporter series, but the oil, he's in the garage, and he's trying to find a way to fight all these dudes, and he covers himself with, you know, motor oil, so he's slippery, right? You know, Hell so yeah. Nobody could, like, grab on him. It's really, like, the first one was really innovative and fun and kind of cool. That one's uh, fun. And he always ends up. There's always a way in every single one of those where he ends up with a shirt off, which I think is amazing. Yeah. But um, I mean, when you chiseled like that, you got to. You got to. That actually reminds me of a really funny story about like getting all oily. And it's like, so there was a story. <laughs> there was a story when I was in uh, our weapon squad. Basically, weapon squad is known as in everywhere as like the. <laughs> I don't even just the grimy guys just like <laughs> the don't do nerds. anything yeah they're like borderline it's it's funny i was doing jokes the other day i was like you don't realize as you go up the tiers in the military so like conventional force and then you got like tier two which would be like us and then tier one as higher you get in the tiers the gayer things get so <laughs> so that's oh, and yeah. we're like we're like right in the middle there so i so remember gay. when i first got there there were stories about like you know obviously hazing is a thing yep. you know and i mean it makes you who the man you are today and weapon squad <laughs> Would always there's one thing it's like you don't go in any other's cage because each squad has a cage oh, okay, and like okay. their own like ready room technically back gotcha. back in the rear and uh, the thing is if you're not if you don't belong to that squad you don't go in the cage because if you go in the cage you will get fucked up like they will grab you and beat you up and like your buddies will have to come save you like they'll literally kidnap you and, <laughs> hilarious uh, so like when we would get bored 
obviously you would tell the privates to go like go in other people's cages and you just and i remember hearing a story about our weapon squad and they would lube him up with like clp and gun lube and they would go have the pr- newest private run and try to touch the back of another squad's cage and but he would be super oily and slick oh. so when so they would try to grab him As he would just like yeah he would barely like squirm away and like run away <laughs> they couldn't grab him because he was so slick oh that's awesome very transporter <laughs> it's good very transporter i'm glad you brought that up a couple more that's great couple more uh one of my favorites uh indiana jones and the last crusade when they're on the beach sean connery who plays his father he the 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 uh, the German plane is coming out. It's making a beat on run, making a, an attack run, mm-hmm. and he gets all the seagulls. He he takes his his umbrella. Oh, yeah, he's and he, like, yeah, and they all fly <laughs> up and they all crash into the uh, the guy's plane, and he crashes into the building. I was like, trying to figure out <laughs> what the fuck you meant by just birds yeah. explanation part explanation mark on this. No, I was like, what is this? I was like, the movie Birds. I was like, yeah. I don't think Sean Connery's in that movie. Well, they are all they all do kill people. Yeah, in, they- in both uh, in both movies. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Okay, I'm glad I finally figured that out. That good, makes a lot of sense. Good man. Oh, man. Glad I could help you with that. Thank uh, you. And then, and this is this is kind of <laughs> one last one. This is it's a little bit of a cheat, but it's uh it's you know the body's momentum used against itself in every Steven Seagal movie ever because he's a big he's a legit Aikido dude. You yeah. know, like he actually went over there and trained and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And um. And so Aikido is all about using joint locks and throws and momentum yeah. against the against the mm-hmm. other guy. So, uh, which I went back and I watched just a couple clips just to refresh my memory. And his his fights are not all that interesting. They're mm-hmm. amazing because you can see his skill and stuff. But Aikido is not meant to be this kind of flashy. You know, you can't. Mm-mm. It's hard to use it for exciting, aesthetically like you know, uh, engaging fight yeah. scenes because it's just like one move. Mm-hmm. It's just like one move here. And it's like he punches there. and one I duck and I take his force and use it to flip yeah, him. You just reverse it and punch him in the jaw, you know, and, and yeah. joint lock his, his wrist and break it. It's, it's like lightning oh. bolt. Yeah. Lightning bolt. <laughs> just really lightning quick. <laughs> Fireball. Fireball. Uh but anyway, that's uh that's I just want to get that in there. Good old Steven Seagal. You you see him nowadays, like he's really talk about letting himself go. He let himself go. He's, he's like, almost like uh who's I always forget his name. He's getting some slack right now, but he's making a comeback. Uh he used to be really big. He's in all the mummies. Brendan Fraser. Brendan, Brendan Fraser, Fraser, yeah. Brendan Fraser let himself go a little bit. Yeah, but I, I heard got, he's coming back. I, I, yeah, I heard that too, and I, I got, I, I heard a little bit about his story. He's, he had some rough stuff happen. Yeah, so I, I have a little bit of sympathy. I know, for I do, him. I do too. I saw a video, and I was yeah. like, oh man, that's rough. So I'm actually, I'm, I'm, ho- I'm rooting for him. Yeah, I'm me too. rooting for a good Brendan Fraser comeback because he was an icon in that age. Yeah. So he needs to, he needs to do it, do it justice, and come yeah. back good. Okay, so I have actually one more I want to talk about, and then I'll get into my actual best improvised <laughs> okay. weapon. All right. So real quick, before we wrap this up, shooter Mark Wahlberg. Oh, so right. So using okay. improvised suppressors and silencers, right? Right, right. So I, in the movie, it's actually a real thing. He like is sitting, or when... God, what's this? I'm terrible with names. It's, all right, it's the guy from... Um, it's not the Danny, Mexican, Danny the Mexican Glover? guy. No, so it's the Mexican guy from Danny Glover's not Mexican. Danny Glover. No, it's the Mexican guy from uh, the movie with Jake Gyllenhaal where they play the cops. Oh, Michael Pena. Michael, Michael Pena. Pena. Thank you, Michael Pena. I got it. I got See? it before you. You yeah, did. I'm, Israel I'm, got that. Yeah, he did. Everybody. Also, la- a few episodes ago, you got his name correct. I did. I thing. see. This is what happens. My brain is doo doo. Too many TBIs. So <laughs> literally, I'll remember someone's name and then I'll just forget it. Sometimes I forget my own name. But uh, it's the pressure for me. Like. Yeah, literally. I know it's trying to impress you. But yeah. Michael Pena. So Michael Pena gets kidnapped. He's an FBI agent that's trying to investigate. Is basically investigating and coming on some like government kind of you know foul play for an assassination and. Uh, Mark Wahlberg's character is an ex uh, Marsoc guy, or Marine Recon sniper guy, and uh, he's uh, Michael Pena's all loaded up in this device that's gonna make it look like he's gonna commit suicide because it's like his it's a rig that as closer they uh, 
they crank it like the gun gets closer to his head and oh. basically when it gets close enough it'll pull the trigger for him so uh. it makes it it uh framing a suicide okay so they're like these guys are like beating the crap out of michael Payne and about to kill him with this device and like you just see mark Wahlberg's character on this boat with this rifle with a water bottle attached to the end of it and he's using it as a suppressor it's an old 22 hunting rifle and he just kills these guys while on the water in a standing position oh. super cool and i'm always like would that can that actually work like a water bottle suppressor and yeah and in fact you can forge suppressors out of water bottles it's just it'll work for like two or three rounds right and it has to be a lower caliber uh bullet like i think nine mils the highest you can go but yeah you can actually make one that's cool they used that that was cool they used that in uh the video game the last of us the last i think the last of us Mm two maybe more so but even like uh oil filters yeah oil filters or like propane canisters if you can get the uh if you can find the the adapter to let them screw on yeah i've seen those work too wow those yeah super cool a little innovation and a little motivation you can fool the atf and the fa (laughs) Just hide your dogs. Yeah. Aww. Hide your dogs, everyone. Okay, so this one is the last thing before we move on to our game here. And, you know, it doesn't have to do with pop culture because, you know, it actually may have happened. And I say may because it's rumors, but the rumors have been confirmed by eyewitnesses. So you be the judge, people. <laughs> the famous ranger getting a kill with an MRE spoon. What? Have you ever heard this? Never heard. You've I've never, never heard, heard this story. This, no. Oh, it's very, it's very famous. Story. What era? What war? Which uh, GWAT. Okay. All right. GWAT, like early GWAT. Global War sure. on Terror. Okay, cool. Yeah. Early GWAT. So maybe like 2000 to like 2011 time frame. Anywhere between that. Okay. Um, But so, yeah, the story is they were, you know, on target and they are they basically took contact by one guy and they killed the guy and they went internal, which going internal just means going inside and starting to clear and there's another guy, almost a barricaded shooter type of situation, but they're ready in the room. So what the what the guy does is he rushes the dude and starts engaging a hand to hand and he can't reach for his knife. So he just reaches for the closest thing on his kit and it's an MRE spoon and he ends up stabbing the dude in the neck with the MRE spoon <laughs> till he dies. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so man. and you know, it's a it's a it's a rumor, but there have been, you know. People come forward saying, yeah, that Multiple literally counts. Yeah, that it literally happened. So, I mean, that just that just does the Rangers justice. <laughs> no uh, one's safe. Just adds to the legend, the mystique. Yeah, that story is a legendary story uh, in the infantry. Man, I can't believe you haven't heard that story. Oh, no, man. God, I... too busy in La La Land. <laughs> I, I've heard, you, you hear stories similar to that where people, I mean, it's the whole episode, improvised kind improvised of things. But never a Ranger in a combat situation with... Situation with an MRE spoon. Yeah, I know. That's MRE crazy. spoons are not hard. They are. It's like soft plastic. They are soft know? plastic. And I mean, a lot of old school guys, like I would see on the forums of like old rangers talking and they're like, yeah, you always carried an MRE spoon on you. And I was always like, why? And they're like, you can do a lot with an MRE spoon. And I was like, okay, okay apparently you can. Look at this. He's going to stab someone to death in the neck. You're creeping me out with that tone. You can do yeah, a lot with you can you do a do lot with an MRE with spoon. Little, you know what I'm like, saying? You know what I'm saying? Damn, dude. Yeah, but I thought that's that's a cool little way to end it. Um, just with a little real life innovation. I love it. A lot of fun. A lot, a lot of, of fun. Man. I like the I like it. I like the uh, the the legend meets uh, the fantasy meets reality with the ranger. The yeah, ranger the triad. Story. Yeah, the triad. The weapon triad. Yeah, the innovative exactly. weapon triad. I, I actually had a lot of fun talking about that, man. That's cool. It was. It is cool. Thanks. You were just like, what? No, it's cool. That's cool. I'm encouraging you. I'm <laughs> yes. forcefully encouraging you. Dude, well, I'm encouraging you to play this game. Let's play this game. All right. Let's do it. All right. This game is called Weapons of Choice, right? Okay. Good name, Chris. Great name. <laughs> we know you're a fucking nerd. Absolutely. Let's just find out how nerdy you are. It is known. It is known by all. So, I'm basically, the premise of this game is I'm just going to name a weapon. Just give you the name of the weapon, and you're going to tell me where it's from. Move okay. your game. Okay, cool. Are you ready to play? Wait. Okay. Okay. All right. Here's your warm-up. This should be easy because we've talked about this one before. Oh, God. BFG 9000. Oh, great. Doom. 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 Boom. Okay. Warm-up the round The big complete. flibbity jibbon gun. Yes. Nine easy thousand. one, but will it remain this easy? All right. Next one. Are you ready, sir? Okay. Okay. The Blades of Chaos. Oh, okay. Blades of Chaos. You know, it's so funny. I only ever played one game in the series, and it's the latest one, but God of War. Yes, you are correct. God of War. And so those good. are those 
dueling. It's the dual blades, yeah. and they have chains on them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whip them out and stuff like that. Yeah. Whip them out. Yeah, just whip it just out. Just whip it out, dude. Okay, next one. The Master Sword. I'm just giving the audience a moment to think about it in their heads because I know they're Because right. I already know the answer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, thank you for choosing a lot of video games, by the way. Oh. Uh, but Don't thank Legend me. of thank Zelda. Chris. The Legend of Zelda. Master that Sword. is correct. All right. Three for three. <laughs> You're doing great. All right. Are you ready for this one? Oh, I actually don't. That's weird. Okay. If you get this, I'll be very impressed. Oh, no. Impressed. Impressed. Improvised. Okay. Improvised. Adapt. That's being down. impressed in an improvised fashion. Mm. <laughs> Very appropriate. Okay. The Noisy Cricket. Oh, okay. That's funny, because you all probably would have been pretty young when the first one of these came out. But that's... Not really. Oh, really? I, Did yeah. you see this in the theater? Yes. Men in Black. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you Noisy it. Cricket. He thinks it's like this weak little gun. Is that the small one? When he's yeah. Like, and then a blast. He gets yeah, blasted but... like way back. Yeah. God, I didn't know that was called the Noisy Cricket. That's just Yeah, sugar. actually, when he shoots it, and it like sends him through the air, it makes the sound of a cricket. Oh, oh, really? That, yeah, if you go back and watch the movie, when he shoots it, it you hear a cricket noise, like a chirping. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh, the proof is in the details. Okay. The first one was the best one out of all those, in my opinion. Mm, yes, it was. It just went downhill. Yeah. They really tried to do too much with it. All right. Next one. Are you ready, sir? Yep. The Buster Sword. The Buster Sword. The Buster Sword. I, the Buster Sword? Say it one more time, it might come to you. Buster Sword, Buster Sword, Buster Sword. I mean, it sounds like something from Mega Man, like the Mega Man series. That would be a good guess. Because it was the Arm Buster or, or Buster Blast or something. I'm going to say Mega Man just because the, the Buster sounds, I don't know why that's ringing a bell, but I can't quite place it. Mega Man. Oh, no, it is not Mega Man. That's a good one. Please don't though. be a video game. Is it a video it game? It is a video game. And there's a lot of these video games. So oh, man. Final Fantasy. Oh, the Buster Sword. Oh, oh the Buster Final Fantasy VII, Cloud Sword. Oh, uh, yeah. is that true? It just yeah. says Final Fantasy. Here. Yeah, the Buster Sword. Okay, yeah. there you go. Sorry, Buster. But <laughs> all right. But that's, hey, you're that's one of the best ones out of the whole. You're one series. for five. I only played one Final Fantasy, and I don't even. I think it was Final Fantasy V, and it's like this guy. Is there a five? It, yeah, I mean that would, that would be that would be Kane. There's and, a seven, so there's probably there a five. Be, I don't know, man. <laughs> they skip Japanese. Star like to skip Wars around came out with four. You're first, right. Four, technically, five, they six, did come so. out first. Touche, Cameron. Point right. goes to you. I always win. That's one with right. Cecil and Kane, the Dragoon, and then he's the Dark Knight and stuff like that. I think it's like he has a pit, a revolver, and he's like this really dark guy. Uh, that's all I remember. I don't remember. It was young when I played it. Oh, oh, oh! I think you're thinking about. Um, He's a character in Seven, um, but it's a... Does he have his own spinoff? Yeah, he's a spinoff game. Um, Dirge of Cerebrus, I think is the spinoff Yes, game. that's think, it. Is it Vincent? No, oh, okay. Anyway. It's something like it, that. But hey, that was going. so long ago. Maybe middle school. I've redeemed myself. If you have. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Zorg ZF1. Oh, the Zorg ZF1, that's from The Fifth Element. Wow. Yeah, yeah, Zorg. It's got all the different things. It's got a net gun. It's got all these, like, multitude of weapons in one thing. Yeah. Jeez. Dude, Gary Oldman, man, Zorg. I'm Zorg. very disappointed. Oh, man. That was good. Yeah. I've only seen The Fifth Element, like, once or twice, and I would never have gotten this. Uh, You're yeah. doing good. All right. right, next one. Auto 9 Gun. Auto 9 Gun. Wow. That is not ringing a bell at all. Auto nine gun, auto nine. Is it spelled O T T O or is no, it spelled A U T O? A U T O, like Grand oh the o- oh okay the, the auto, auto nine, nine gun. the auto nine gun. I'm sorry, auto auto nine the auto auto nine gun. Yeah, is it German? Uh, where's the money, dude? Sorry, that is that crazy. what it's from? No, no. Some, oh, okay. <laughs> I told you, I just I just watched the Big Lebowski auto again. I'm full gun. of those quotes. Mm. Am I gonna kick myself if I if I when I I'll give you a time frame eighties oh eighties the auto nine gun oh man it's fine I probably have seen it um I don't know man RoboCop oh uh, oh you know what man it's so funny I was that was like because I thought I don't know why the Ed two o nine 
Uh, and uh, you know, auto nine gun. Oh, anyway, Ed two o. What's the Ed two o nine? The Ed two o nine is the big wa- the big oh, you know, the walking, walking thing, thing. bipedal. You know, you yeah. Know, lay down they, your arms. You have thirty seconds arms. to comply. Yeah. You know, <laughs> thank you for your cooperation. Just blast the dude away. Yeah. Thank you for cooperation. Uh, well, now, which gun is that? Is that that's his pistol? The, that's his pistol. Oh, okay. Yeah, the cool. fully automatic little pistol. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Nice. Okay. Did you see the remake, the revamp of Rubber? Yeah, I hated it. You hated it. Hated it. You don't. You're not a big revamp person. Well, I'm just not a bad remake person. person. <laughs> yeah, that's that, you know? I'm just not a terrible. It's not a bad movie. movie person. It was a bad movie, you know. <laughs> and the first one had social commentary in it. Paul Vorhoven. It's really hard to remake a movie like that. You know? Yeah, they they should remake uh, the Toxic Avenger. I think they are. Are they? Yeah, I think there's no like way they can... budget. They can. There's no way they can get away with. Well, that they, well they're this, not going to. But in like this they're going to see world. Yeah, they're going to do a big butt. Oh, they better, man. They better. I mean, damn that movie. I watched that movie, and my sister walked in the room. She's like, "Are you watching porn?" I was like, "No." Yeah, I, my buddy. That's calls on the that, other channel. In the world of low budget filmmaking, my buddy calls that bringing home the groceries. Yeah, there's a lot of blood <laughs> and a lot of boobs. You got to bring yeah, home the groceries. The bees, the two bees, the rule of bees, blood and boobs. Okay, next one, the Mark II Lancer assault rifle. Oh my gosh, that sounds really familiar. Mark II Lancer assault rifle. This is a video game. Yes. Oh, okay. I can't. Even. Oh, okay. I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> sorry. Oh, uh, the Mark II Lancer assault rifle. I want to say Halo, but I I don't think that's it. Lancer sounds like very Halo esque. Uh, I don't know. Just for the sake of time, we'll just we can keep going, man. I don't know. I give up. Halo. Gears of War. The Lancer. Oh, okay. Well, then I, I would never yeah, play it the, the Oh, okay. You so I'm the off Lancer the hook. So that the, one technically doesn't count. The Hammer Burst is the other one. <laughs> not off the one. hook. Should have known. Uh, Cam's, uh, favorite, uh, Cam's favorite game. You should have known. You should have known. We have talked about friends. it enough should've times. I went, I went ahead and ordered Aliens for you. Should have known. Oh, uh, uh, so did you? Okay. Yeah, I did. I watched it twice. Oh, dude. No, you're okay. That's I'm not taking it personal. Okay. Next one. I'll just move on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's just get out of here. The holy hand grenade of Antioch. <laughs> With which we may blow thine enemies to bits, being naughty in your sight. Yeah. The, 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 the Monty <laughs> Pye thought of the okay. Holy Grail. I shouldn't have said it like that. Like, even if, okay. <laughs> I mean, a holy hand he grenade. He would have gotten it. He yeah. Gotten it. <laughs> no if he could finish that sentence, he would have gotten There's it. There's only one holy hand grenade. Yeah. Amazing know. at killing rabbits. Okay. <laughs> the number but, you count is three. <laughs> not three? two. No. Five is right out. <laughs> I gotta go and rewatch that movie. It's so good, man. I'm I'm surprised. Did you get this off the list, Chris? The Holy Hand Grenade, because that was on one of the countdowns I was doing research on. Uh, no, I just know that it's a weapon that, and it's nerdy, and okay. So I knew that right. good on you. Good also, on you. I think it makes an appearance in Ready Player One when the the movie Ready Player One, Steven Spielberg. You know, really? I think he has the Holy Hand Grenade. And he uses it in the club scene. Yeah, oh. he goes up. Oh. <laughs> All right, moving on for the sake of time. <laughs> All right, the lawgiver. Wait, wait, wait. Say that one more time. The lawgiver, one word. Lawgiver. The lawgiver. Man, uh, this is just a stab in the dark, but I'm going to say Judge Dredd. Wow. You're stabbing flesh, brother. <laughs> oh, that was good. Yeah, Judge uh, Dredd. Penetration. Got it. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. Did the you lawgiver. like that remake? I like that remake. I like that remake. See, yeah, too. that I, was a good remake. That's what. That's what the. Movie that's because the first been. one was garbage. Yeah, yeah. that's right. See, because so I don't the, like bad movies. Yeah, <laughs> first one was Sylvester. <laughs> yeah, that the guy. The, 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 the. Yes. And Armando Sante. Yeah, yes. the, the, and Rob Schneider. Oh, and Rob Schneider. Rob Schneider is a carrot. A thief. A thief. Yeah. A kid. A dirty a felon. <laughs> Dread. Dread. Okay, yeah, I did like that remake. It was much better. Plus, that's that fucking... Plus, I want to do that inhalant thing that looks cool. Yeah, that drug. Yeah, yeah I want to, I want to take that drug. Down, yeah. yeah, that's cool. Can't okay. do drugs. Don't do drugs, kid. All right. The last one. And this one, kind of cool name. The Penetrator. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and this isn't... Something else attached to a jackhammer. I was gonna say, is it is it the one from uh, from Dust Till Yeah, Long? this is just a dildo attached to a uh, drill, right? The penetrator. Oh my gosh, I can see the image in my mind. Unfortunately, I can see the image in my mind. What, the dildo attached to a the drill? dildo attached to att- attached, attached to a, a sawzall. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> he pulls it up and he's like, oh he's like, ah, oh, that's the wrong one. But I can't remember that. I can't pick. I can't think of the name of the movie. But I see the image in my mind. The penetrator. Uh, just because I want to mention it, because I think people should go see it. But uh, um, 
Orgasmo? No. <laughs> okay. I, I just completely just was going off the railroads making jokes. Dude, I, no, that's not... in a movie. I can see the guy pick but it up. But that's not what this is. That's not what this is? Oh, no. Penetrator. He was just up. making jokes. Orgasmo. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Or, go see Orgasmo. It's actually Trey Parker and Matt Stone. It's really funny. You know, my buddy was just telling me about that movie the other day. He's a Mormon who, who yeah, gets Mormon in the porn. who gets in the porn, but he doesn't do. He doesn't it. do. He's porn. just like a yeah. stand-in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Go. Who, what are we talking about here? Okay, this is from Saints Row. Oh, okay. I've I've only played. I think I only played the fourth one, but Penetrator. Isn't All right, Saints cool. Row just a? GTA? But it is just a giant dildo. It, it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it a, is. Oh. That's why when you made your joke, it. I was like, don't tell him what it is. But... Oh, I was just making a joke. I no, thought this it's a was giant some... dildo that you club people with. Okay, there you go. Okay, see, we had... One... I should have just said dildo because that's... It's so obvious. It's so on yeah, the, the nose. Penetrator. Yeah, but that doesn't say what the name of the... the You're right. Saints Row, it is... is. Yeah. It's, Saints Row is basically just a fantastic GTA. Like, it's fantastical. Like, the fourth one, they're in, like, a digital world, oh, so you can I do see. anything. That was like a fantasy. Know? I thought yeah. you meant it was, like, a fantastic GTA. Oh, yeah. It's, like, it's, it's really good. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, no. Man, I mean, we used to have a giant black dildo in the mortar section. They right. called it Black Thunder, and they would beat people with black it. Black Thunder. That's, yeah. that's pretty good. They would beat people Very with Very lock, it. stock, and two smoking barrels. Exactly. Well... I mean, you got a good chunk of them. I think, what, you've nine for ten? Ten or eight, eight for, for ten? ten or something? Eight for eight ten? A, a seven that's out of ten. A, or I think that's I a three. good score. Yeah, C's get degrees, my friend. That's right. I, at least I, it's good enough for government work. I it is good enough for say. government work. Great. Well, I think that brings us to the conclusion of this week's episode of the Pop Culture Field Manual Podcast. It's been fun, man. It's been it was fun. fun. This is our first of those... Yeah, you know, it wouldn't matter to you because it comes out every week. But this is the yeah. first time we've been hanging out in a couple of weeks because I had a yeah. vacation. I just got back and stuff. Israel so. needed to take some R and R time. Yeah, it was good, but this it was fun, good. Man. This was fun. We're glad to be back, and we hope that you enjoyed listening to this episode. Go ahead and send us any comments you guys have at PCFM podcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. We try to contact you guys back, or at least respond, and we love. The ideas you guys send. Your yeah. ideas make these episodes happen. So right. keep it coming, people. Yeah. You're doing come, great. We come out with a new episode every Wednesday. So don't forget to subscribe mm -hmm. on uh, anywhere where you listen to your po favorite podcast episodes. Uh, also, we have a YouTube page of the same name, Pop Culture Field Manual on YouTube, where we release the visual versions of these podcasts with a few extra minutes and extra content and stuff. Yeah, some little behind Goodies the scenes for you. things. So like and subscribe and share with your friends. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, it's the uh, you know it's I totally ran out of juice just then. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, it's we're one episode in and this is first and last. Yeah, yeah that's first right. and last back. <laughs> if you want to check out a awesome streetwear brand, check out my Los Angeles based streetwear brand, Kit God. You can find us on Instagram at Kit God Apparel or on our website www.kitgodapparel.com. That's right. And if you want to hang out with me a little bit more, I stream on Twitch. So go to twitch.tv slash my happy self. Stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It's a it's a good time. All right. Well, before you judge someone, walk a mile in their shoes, because then when you do judge them, you're a mile away and you have their shoes. All right. Have, have a music, good one. Give music. music.